In this video trade, we're going to look at the NASDAQ extra symbols at the end of the stock symbol. What do they mean? Stay tuned. Hey traders, one welcome to you. So you might have been trading shares or stocks and you've seen at the end of the symbol a dot and then another letter and you're wondering what does that actually mean? Well, it depends on the exchange you're trading on. With the NASDAQ, I've put together A to Z of all the things that might be listed and what it actually means. Now, NYSE even more so, LSE, other things as well. My advice is if you see a stock with an N symbol on, go to the exchange and check it out. But here's just some of the things that you might see if you trade the NASDAQ. So if you have dot A, you've got class A shares, dot B, class B. Often companies are gonna split their shares up into class A and close class B shares. And it depends on the voting rights you get for those shares. Often the voting rights on B are a fraction of those with class A. Then you've got C, uh, C which is exempt. D, which is a new issue, which could often be like a reverse split of the share, something like that. E, delinquent. Uh, F is foreign. G is a first convertible bond. Then we've got H and I, which is the second convertible bond for the same company and third convertible bond for the same company. Uh, J is a voting. K is non-voting to distinguish the difference between the two and the ownership. Um, then we've got unusual situations. Then miscellaneous situations that aren't designated here. And Z's also the same. Uh, miscellaneous situations, L and Z. So something unusual, you'd have to kind of dig and see exactly what that was. But it's just to highlight the fact that you're not just going to pile into it. If you've got a dot Z on it, you're going to go, well, something is not normal here. I need to find out exactly what the heck I'm buying. Okay, then we've got um, MNOP going fourth preferred issues, third preferred, second preferred, and first preferred. If you're going after fifth, that's when it comes into the Z miscellaneous situations. Q is bankruptcy. We've often seen a lot of those. We've been talking about them going into the Q, trading as Q. Um, it doesn't indicate that they're bankrupt as such. They're going through the bankruptcy proceedings and process. So um, yeah, yeah, I don't need to explain that any further. We do it. Uh, R is rights. Um, then we've got S, which is beneficial interest. T is with warrants or rights. U is units. Uh, v is when issued. W is warrants. X is a mutual fund. Y is ADR. Uh, Z is miscellaneous situations. ADR is uh, American deposit receipt and that basically is a kind of a mirror of a stock that's trading on another exchange so you might get an ADR for Vodafone Vodafone trades on the London Stock Exchange and the ADR would track its American depository receipt based on the value of the stock on that other exchange so this is all very confusing right some of these things you're thinking heck and do you need to know them not really. You know, the idea is that you just need to be aware that when there's a letter there, it pays to do a little bit more digging as to what's gone on. You don't just, not just buying the stock, there's something there that's maybe something quite useful to look at. Something like the Class A and Class B, you'll get like, especially on the UK exchange, uh, for example, Class A, like Royal Dutch Shell split into A and B, different voting rights. Does it affect how it moves? No, the stocks generally move in sync. There's some slight anomalies there and that's what the spread traders take advantage of, but ultimately, if you're thinking of buying them for voting rights, then you want to want to know that. Similarly, if you're buying something, uh, you know, that's, that's going to bankruptcy, you might say, well, I need to know that that is what I'm purchasing. So the, the moral of this, guys, is if you see, no matter what exchange you're trading on, whether you are trading on a UK exchange or German, anywhere in the country and in the world, if you see an unusual letter after a dot, sometimes it's, it's put as a slash as well in some instances. So it will be, you know, VOD slash, uh, Q, hopefully that never happens, Vodafone goes bankrupt, but VOD slash forward slash, or it could be a dot, or something else to distinguish the difference between the company name. So, you know, you'd have like VOD dot and then Q, or VOD slash Q, something that, if I know which exchange you're looking at, to denote that that's the company ticker code, or EPIC, however you want to put it, and then this is the kind of special situation code um, that needs to be looked at. And then you can go and look at the exchange and look at the key and say, okay, well, that means that it's, um, you know, whatever it may be, it's uh, fourth preferred, it's non-voting, it's voting. But you know, most of the time, guys, if we're investing or we're trading, we're going to be trading stuff that doesn't have any of these end bits on. It's only if we're in a neutral situation that it just brings our attention to it. Hopefully, if we're in that situation now and you're sort of keying something up and it comes up as this, 
it'll make you stop for a second and go, well, what actually is that? What does that mean for my investment? What does that mean for my trade? Do I need to be looking at this? Is it even the right symbol? Oh, that's another common mistake. You might find multiple symbols that are the same stock, but ultimately have different things. And if you're trading, you obviously want the top one that's the most liquid and that has the most volume going through. So anyway, guys, those are the extra symbols at the end of a stock symbol. That's specifically for the NASDAQ. Like I say, there are other exchanges out there with different things, but A to Z, NASDAQ, symbols at the end of it. Take care, whatever you're doing, and see you next one. Goodbye.